Hello everyone, my name is Sindel. Today we are sewing the AFI Exquisite Bra, an all-time favorite. I highly recommend you watch the tutorial fully before sewing to avoid mistakes. I have finally found some time to finish this Exquisite Bra, so where I left off is um, really close to the finish to be honest, so I'm going to be putting in the upper edge pico elastic and tacking down the underwire channeling. So to get my machine ready, I'm just gonna put the beige in the bobbin since that's what's going to show on the front side of the bra. And then I'm gonna do black on top since it's going to be on the underside, um, which is going to be against the black pico elastic. So um, the exquisite bra uses half inch pico for the top and bottom elastic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that now. So we have reached a quality control point with the exquisite. So I would go ahead and take the bra and fold it in half and line up the cups at the sling and at that underarm edge, line up the underwire line, and then just make sure that the slings are the same height. Um, and in this case, they actually are. But in some cases, one of the slings has been a little bit taller than the other, just because, you know, when you put cups in, sometimes things shift. So just check that out, that way you don't end up with uneven straps down the road. So now that I've seen that these are both the same height, I'm actually going to mark a half of an inch down from the top of the sling. And that is where I will stop my Pico elastic. So you're gonna sew this up to that point. That way later when you fold this down it's not super bulky. And then what I'm going to do is attach my Pico elastic with the plush side facing up. Uh, so the first pass lining up just like we did before the straight edge to the straight edge and sewing as close as possible to the Pico edge without going over. And with this little scoop attachment I usually start with the elastic a little bit further than that scoop attachment. That way it goes all the way up to the edge and I can just trim it later. So this Pico elastic is going to run from that point all the way around to that mark, that half inch mark. And you're gonna wanna apply just a little bit of tension around the underarm area, just like the little bit of tension that we applied to the bridge. And here's what that looks like. So as you can see, uh, the Pico elastic stops about a half of an inch or the marked half inch from the top. That way later when this folds under, there's not a bunch of bulk where the uh, ring is going to go. It's gonna have a nice clean finish just like that. So I have the plush side up and I have just sewn a zigzag stitch that was two and a half wide and three long as close to the pico edge as I could without going over. And that's what this looks like from the underside. And you wanna make sure, you don't have to do this, I just think it makes it easier that you uh, take a little pin or a clip and take that little uh, underwire tail and just tuck it out of the way. So now I'm just going to trim the excess just like we did with the bottom band. And then this will be ready for a second pass. Okay, now I'm ready for the second pass. I've increased the stitch length on my machine to be a three by three zigzag. Um, I've trimmed away the excess, but as you can see, as I approached the top, I kind of graded it out so that the top had the full width. That way it has a nice clean finish whenever it turns over. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Run a zigzag stitch as close to the straight edge as I can without going over. And then just a little bit of tension through the underarm area and hope for the best with this little bee that's trapped here. And here's what that looks like. Not too bad. I did have a little bit of a snag here with the thickness from this bee, but I think it's gonna end up okay. Um, I also didn't get as close to the pico edge right here as I would have liked, but it's not entirely noticeable, so it's not worth unpicking. I just trimmed away the excess of the elastic down there and made that into a nice little curve. And then this is what the strap attachment is looking like and we'll put a ring right here 
So now that edge is done, so I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so now I have both sides with the upper pico installed and I think it looks pretty good, can't complain too much. So uh, before tacking down the underwire channeling, what I'm going to do is actually close off the top of each of these underwire channels. That way I don't have a messy presentation. Like that is a very clean bridge right now. So sometimes you can just tack the underwire down in one step to the bridge, just with a zigzag stitch or a bar tack, whatever you've got going on. But um, this doesn't really have a good way of hiding that. So to keep it really clean, I'm just going to take a straight stitch and I'm going to close off the top of the channel by just stitching back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it's nice and secure. And I'm gonna do it to both sides. So I usually just lay down the channeling and mark with Taylor's chalk where the bridge is and then sew directly below that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close off both of these channels. So I recognize it's going to be really difficult to see, but there's just a line of straight stitching right here and right here, and it's not really visible on the front of the bra. So when I go and tack in this channeling, it's gonna be a nice clean finish, I hope. Um, as long as I don't flub up the uh, underwire channeling being tacked down, but hopefully it'll be okay. Okay, so now we are going to be tacking down the underwire channeling. So I've made sure to switch out my bottom bobbin to be beige again because it's going to show on the front side of the bra. And what we're going to do is tack the underwire channeling down. So we're going to be sewing with a straight stitch as close to this edge here as possible. I usually do a three length and I start up here on the elastic and do a little bit of a back stitch and then just come down and follow the underwire. And then when I make it to the center, um, when I get to about here, I start raising and lowering the foot and I'll put the second piece of channeling because what I'm gonna do is I want to get it to a point where my needle is up and then when I put the other part of the channeling down, the next time I put my needle down will be right here at this apex and then I can pivot and keep sewing. So I'll try to see if I can get that on film. I think it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I'll see what I can do. Okay, so I've sewn the underwire channeling down up until this point. So the bridge is right here. And what I'm hoping to have happen is for these two to overlap and to catch it right at the kind of um, apex there, put my needle down, lift the foot up, spin it and keep sewing. So for me, uh, for the best fit, all of my bridges are a little bit narrow. So depending on what modifications you make to patterns or what size you're using, you might not have to do this, but it is okay for channeling to overlap if you have a narrow bridge and this is how you do that. So let's hope I can do this on camera. just there. Mm. One more. There, now I've definitely got it. I felt the thickness change. So now I'm going to lift my presser foot up, rotate it like this, put this down and keep sewing just like normal. So I'm not gonna lie to me, that is the most stressful step in the entire process because it's very obvious if this doesn't line up quite right, but I think that this looks super clean. I am so happy with that. It is just slightly more angled that way, but uh, probably to the common looker, they're gonna think it's pretty spot on. Honestly, it's it's really just you know off by the tiniest little bit. Um, and you see we've closed in our Gothic arch. Uh, and when we flip it over, the straight stitches are here so that's nice and tacked down so what i'm going to do next is just trim away the excess channeling at the center but i'm going to keep the excess channeling up here because it's going to make it a little bit easier when we feed that underwire through in a minute i do anticipate this to be quite the challenge this b is really bulky right here uh it's not looking too good for me but um yeah, now we are really in the home stretch. So I'm going to trim this 
And then I think we're going to go ahead and put the rings on. So for most bras, you're going to need a set of rings, two sets of rings and sliders. So two sliders and two rings. And right now we're just going to work with the rings. I'm using, um, this is a gunmetal color ring. And all I'm going to do now is feed it through right here. And then I'm simply going to tack it down under my machine. So it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but you'll want to run the stitching right down here. Um, I would do it to where your bobbin matches the bra color here uh, so that it's got the nice color on the outside. So I'm just going to do this to both of the strap attachments. Now here is what that looks like, all attached, so it's good and secure, and it's not bulky, um, but if you would have continued that elastic all the way up, you can imagine it would have been really bulky through here. So now you've got a nice clean finish for this strap attachment point, and so now we're going to go on to the part where we are making the strap. So the first thing you're going to do to make the straps is cut 18 inches, two 18 inch um, segments from your strap elastic. And then you're gonna take one of those sliders and you're going to feed your strap elastic through the center part of that slider. And you're gonna go right side out. So shiny side or whichever side you want facing out is going to be on the outside of the slider. So this is the shiny side, shiny, not shiny. And I'm simply going to run a straight stitch securing this down right here. Alrighty, so now that has been tacked down with a line of stitching. Um, I've only folded over maybe a half of an inch here to create this. Um, so to attach this strap now, I'm gonna take the bra and I'm gonna run it with the mat side or the not good side not outward facing side through gracious <laughs> through the ring um, and then with the shiny side facing out run it through the slider Oof, having a time you know when you try to get this on camera it never goes on the first try So then we'll just pull it to adjust. And there you have it. Nice and attached, shiny side out. Um, so now I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. So now that I have the straps attached at the ring, it's time to attach them to the back band of the bra. So what you're going to do is just make sure that there is no twist. And then with the right side facing up, just kind of like with the Pico elastic, I'm going to attach this to the curved edge. Um, and the elastic doesn't curve very well, but luckily the mesh does on the machine. So I would kind of keep the elastic steady and walk the power mesh underneath of it. You're going to attach the elastic to this curved Pico edge by running a zigzag stitch as close to the bottom edge of the elastic as possible. I don't think I can show you this on my machine without messing it up, so I'll show you the after and hopefully that will be clear. Okay, here that is attached. So as you can see, the zigzag stitch is along the bottom edge of the elastic, just as though it were Pico elastic. Um, and this is just a free floating edge on the inside. Um, if you've exceeded the top of the elastic at all, you can just trim it away, but just don't trim too close to this zigzag edge. You do want to have a little bit of excess up here. That way it doesn't stretch and uh, fray out of these stitches. So now I'm just going to do this to the other side as well. So now I've attached my second side and just for your knowledge, I was using a three by three here, just like I did for the upper edge of the, or like the second pass of the Pico. So now that that is done, the only thing left to do is attach the hook and eye and then 
the wires and closing those off. So really in the home stretch here. So this is the hook and eye that I have for this bra. I uh, tend to prefer the three high hook and eye. I just think that it creates a lot more support and a better fit. So if you know anything about bra construction, really the bottom band is everything. If your bottom band is not snug, then the rest of the bra is not going to function or fit like it should. So even though I have a smaller cup size, I do prefer the three high hook and eye because it makes the fit so much better. Uh, that being said, when you are looking at the bra, if you flip it so the guts are facing you, you'll want the hooks to be on the left hand side and the, um, I guess those are actually the eyes. You want the eyes to be on the left hand side and the hooks to be on the right hand side. I guess it really doesn't even matter as long as it gets around your body, but typically eyes are on the left and your hooks are on the right. Some people actually take a glue stick and glue this part prior to putting it in the machine, but I'm afraid that it'll get all gummy if I do that. So I just kind of do a lot of the fitting at the machine. And so um, what you're gonna do, and I forgot a very important step and it shows, darn it. So I need to back up here a second. I just unpicked where I attached the strap onto the back wing because I forgot a very important step. And I've actually, I don't think I've uh, forgotten this step before, but at least it's super easy to fix. I just unpicked that little bit of stitching. And what I'm going to do, so what happened is I went to go attach the hooks and realized that the back of the bra was slightly taller than the hooks. So what I'm gonna do is line up with the bottom pico there, the hooks, and you can see that my back wing is just taller by the slightest bit. So I'm just going to trim that littlest bit off so that the eye attachment, the hook and eye attachment is the exact height of the hook and eye. So I'm just, it's, it's not really super scientific, just, there we go. So I created a new attachment. I'll clean this up here in a second. And now I'll reattach that strap and do the same thing for the other side. So it fits perfectly flush with the hook and eye. Okay, so fortunately that only took a quick moment to fix. So what I'm going to do now is attach those hook and eyes. And I'm basically just gonna do this at the machine. So I'm just going to slide my wing into the little pocket here. And of course it'll line all flush when I get in there at the sewing machine. And for me, everyone has different ways of attaching their hook and eyes. What I like to do is actually run a zigzag stitch dead center over the hook and eye attachment and then sometimes I will go back and do a straight stitch over it but I just find that that makes it all flat and um, sometimes with these uh, hook and eyes they can have an itchy spot on the edges and for some reason putting a zigzag stitch over it keeps it from being itchy so I'll just run a zigzag stitch that is four wide and I think one and a half to two long. Yeah. So a really wide stitch, but close together to connect the hook and eye with the wing. So I'll go ahead and do that and be right back. For this, it's super easy because you just center it, but for the hooks, it's a little bit harder since they're kind of right close to what you're trying to sew. Okay. And here that is attached. It's probably a little bit difficult to see, but the zigzag stitch is right over this edge, just catching this mesh and always do a tug test to make sure that, and I'm pulling quite forcefully, that the mesh actually got caught in here because uh, when I first started making bras, sometimes when I was sewing, um, the mesh would slip a little bit when it was going under the machine. And then the first time I would wear it, the mesh would pop out from the hook and eye. So that's another quality control point. Just go ahead and tug on it and make sure it's gonna be able to withstand the test of being worn. So now I'm going to do the hooks. 
So with the eyes, you want them facing up and the hooks you want facing down so that they'll catch those eyes. So when you sew this, I'm gonna sew it this side up on the machine so that the eyes are facing up, that way they don't get caught in the feed at all. So I'm gonna do just like before and slip this right into the pocket. And this time though, the zigzag is gonna be really hard to get dead center, so it's gonna be maybe a little bit more on the mesh. Um, but whatever you have to do to get that nice and clean and secure, but it's not gonna to wanna to get close to these eyes. It'll, you know, the foot will skirt around it. So kind of, and that's why I think zigzag stitches look so much cleaner because if you use a straight stitch, um, sometimes it looks a little wobbly where the foot is going in and out of these eyes. And now the eyes are attached. So once again, give it a good tug test, make sure it's gonna withstand being worn. Um, and when I attached this, I of course had the needle aligned all the way left, but when I did the eyes, I had it down the center, um, but you wanna have it all the way left, that way it catches the edge of the fabric for the hooks. So now all that's left to do really is insert the underwire and close off the channeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my time and insert wire. So I usually like leaving a little bit of a tail. And when you insert your wire, you're gonna figure out most wires have a mark on the inside to indicate that that's the center of the wire. And for me and the wires that I use, it's this little glittery tip, but sometimes it'll just be a colored dot. But if you hold up your wire, it's usually pretty obvious which end is which. So you'll want to feed the part that is clearly the center into the center. And this just takes time, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and do this off screen. Oh, or maybe it'll be super easy for once. It's really amazing how much the bra takes shape as soon as the underwires are in there. So now I'm just gonna make sure that that underwire is pushed as far center as possible. And I'm going to tack down the underwire channeling, being sure not to hit the wire, of course, because that'll break a needle. So you'll just want to do that with a zigzag stitch or a bar tack, whatever you feel like is gonna look really nice and clean here. That way the wire doesn't pop out when wearing it. All right, so there it is, bar tacked right at the top there. And then all I've done is trimmed away the excess channeling and now the bra is complete. I'm going to get some better shots of it tomorrow, but I am so excited for this. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next.